There are two reasons why we slice the golf ball, and both reasons have something to do with this part of the golf club, the club head. That first reason is what we would call strike location. If we are not hitting the golf ball out of the middle of the head, well, we are adding a variation to our shot, which we would call club face override. Now, if you're hitting a little bit of a slice with an iron, there is a good chance, a very, very likely chance, that the golf ball is striking on the toe of the golf club. If we are doing that with an iron, it is going to put a slicing spin on the golf ball. Funny enough, if we are to do the same thing with a driver, we would get a hook shape. So if you're getting a slice shape with your driver and it's strike location variant, it would mean you're hitting it out of the heel of the golf club. We call it negative gearing. Am I going to get into depth with that? No. We'll save that for another video. So just remember, one of the reasons why you could be slicing the golf ball is strike location. If you're hitting it out of the toe of an iron, it's going to slice. If you're hitting it out of the heel with a driver, it is going to slice. So those are the reasons why you possibly could be slicing the golf ball with regards to the factor of strike location. The other one, of course, is what we would call open club face. If that's me right now and I am got a neutral club face and I strike the golf ball like this, well, generally nine times out of 10, I'm gonna hit that ball relatively straight. But if my club face is slightly open in relationship to my swing path, then I will be hitting a sliced shot. So today we're gonna to be talking about this variant in specific, the open club face. And we're gonna be talking about one specific cause to that club face being open. And that's got something to do with what we would call excessive cupping of the lead wrist as we get to the top of the swing. If we have cupping through that lead wrist, that is understanding we have a neutral grip and I'll leave a video down below so you can see what a neutral grip would look like. If we have a neutral grip and we have excessive cupping of the lead wrist when we get to the top of the swing, we would have an excessively open club face. Now, nine times out of 10, it would mean the club face is pointing to you, the camera. If it points even down a little bit, then we've got a really, really open club face. If we have a square to what we would call closed club face, it would be pointing a little bit more up to the sky, which is what we would try to do, which would mean we would have a more flat lead wrist at the top of our backswing. And that's something we're all trying to achieve if we have a little bit of a slice. That is also understanding that you understand that we have to release the club down at the point of impact, which also helps to square that club face. But if you do have excessive cupping, we generally start to see a bending leading arm as well as we get to the top of the backswing, which then causes you to come over the top. Now, a slice can happen whether you're coming over the top or coming on perfect path or coming from the inside. Just remember, if the club face is open to its path, well, we are going to see a slice shot. But if you can get a camera out and you can see that you have excessive cupping, what I want you to do, I want you to go to the kitchen and I want you to go get a spoon. Yes, a spoon. And what you're gonna do with that spoon is you are going to stick it down the back of your glove. And you sticking it down the back of your glove, you've got the handle down the back of your glove and then you've got the spoon up on your forearm just like so. Now remember, make sure the round bit is on your forearm not the pointy bit, because that could get quite sore. But now that you've got that set up, what this is going to do is it's going to give you a very, very good telltale sign of what your wrist is like at the top of your backswing. And what you would want to feel is, is when you get to the top of the backswing that you don't create any pressure on the lead forearm when you get to the top of the backswing. The more the wrist is cupped, the more pressure you will feel in the glove as well as in the lead forearm at the top of the backswing. Now the great thing about this specific drill is you can do this while hitting golf balls. And I'm out here on the range at Murdoch Pines, of course. Now just remember guys, make sure you like, subscribe, share, give it a thumbs up, share this content with everybody that you know, just so it helps me get that content out to a lot more people. Anyway, back to the lesson. Now that I've got that spoon in there, like I said, you can take back swings. Now naturally you'll feel a little bit of pressure on your lead forearm as you take your setup position because you'll have a little bit of cupping in the lead wrist at the start. But by the time you get to the top of the backswing, you would wanna feel like that pressure has completely gone away. If that pressure's gone away, now we have a flat lead wrist. 
From there, you can take some nice controlled swings and make contact with a golf ball, trying to eradicate that pressure. And as you can see there, I'm not trying to hit it hard, I'm just trying to get a good feel for what I have at the top of my backswing. And for me, the best practice that you can do is a practice where you can create feels, but also strike the golf ball. I'm also a big advocate of what I would call static drills or drills without a golf club, but nothing is better than actually hitting golf balls where you can put that drill into place. So again there, back swing up to the top. We don't want to feel that pressure of that cup. We want to feel like there's no pressure. Again, take your setup, nice gentle swing. Take that pressure off the spoon and swing through and make contact. And again there, two nice little draw shapes. Once you've put that feel into practice a fair bit, take the spoon out and try it without the spoon. But if you start to see that shape come back again and you look at the video and you can see that cup, stick that spoon back in and have another go. So here we are, no spoon. Voila, nice flat wrist. Ball moving down with a slight right to left shape. So if you have a slice, go to the kitchen, get a spoon, stick it in the glove, put it into practice, and I'm sure it will help to eradicate that slicing issue. All right, guys, like, subscribe, share. If you're out here in Western Australia, jump on down to Murdoch Pines. Big things happening here this year.